guys, Simpoder here and today we are going to start off uh, by doing the front end of the post uh, create listings page. Uh, we are probably not going to do the, the back end just yet because it will take some time. But yeah, we'll get the form ready and ready to send an HTTP request, a post request to our back end in order to create a post. Before carrying on with the video, I just want to let you know that only 20% of you are subscribed to the channel. So if you are enjoying this series and want to see more of it, then please do leave a subscribe down below. It will help you to not miss a single video in the future. So let's jump right into it. And the first thing that I'm going to do, it's just to start the development server on our machine. So the first thing is uh, sudo mongod, uh, input your passwords. And after it says waiting for connections on port 27017, uh, we can go into another terminal and run sudo npm run start dev. Okay, just run that and it should be running. Let's uh, come into our web page and see where we left off in the previous lesson. Okay, so as you can see, our front end is pretty basic and we have to, for example, for the login, we have to the, go to the login page and insert it in the URL bar. Um, we are still going to do this for the post creation. Um, so only at the end of the last of the tutorial of the series, better yet, will we actually do the buttons and all of that, make the page seem like a, a web page, a real web page that people would use. But for now, I just want to look at the functionality of uh, the, the project. So let's jump uh, right into our um, VS code. I'm going to clear all of this and I'm going to come into index.js. Okay, so now for the post creation, we want for the user to only access it when he types uh, post uh, slash create. And this is the structure that I'm going to, to, to use. So anything that has to do with the, the post, a listing, uh, it will be post slash create, post slash list, post slash whatever. Okay, so I'm going to just come in here and uh, double one of them. In this case, the login and say post slash create. And this component will be a new component that we are going to create, which we'll call create, create post. And I'm going to double the login as well in here. And instead of login, I'm going to say create post. Okay. Now, the thing is, we still haven't created a component for this. So uh, I'm going to create one folder specifically for posts. So posts. And here I'm going to create a file uh, called create.js. Okay, uh, this will be the, the, the file that will have the form which will allow us to create um, a post for the user that's currently logged in. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and instead of login, login, it is going to be post slash create. And this should give us a, um, the link directly to this component. But right now there's nothing inside the create.js. So we'll have to uh, do that uh, right away. So the first thing that we are going to do is to import react from React, not free act, but react. All right, then I'm going to import a bunch of uh, things that uh, right now won't make much sense, but um, better yet, let's not import anything else at the moment. Let's just deal with the, the front end and the elements that go in it. Okay, so in order to create a component, the first thing that you have to do is create a class. In this, in this case, the class create, which extends components. Okay, and this class will have a constructor, constructor, which will pass along uh, the argument props. 
and uh, it will do the super props okay um, I'll just stop in here uh, let me know if you prefer this dark mode or the light mode uh, I completely forgot it I was going to, to ask you about in the beginning of the lesson but let me know because I believe this is better but yeah it is completely up to you please leave a comment uh, telling me what you think about it okay going on I'm going to say this dot state equals to and now the state will have all of the variables that we are going to pass along on the post request uh, to the database so uh, the first thing that we'll have is the title and we have to do this because um, we have to continuously update these variables when the user changes uh, the input text for for them so that's how react handles it uh, I know this must be seem must seem odd for those of you that came from the Android lessons, uh, where we just had to do the set the get text at the end when we actually wanted to use the uh, the data from that input edit text in this case. Uh, but in here, no, you have to continuously update the variables, and then at the end you can just get the variables and they will be updated. Then we'll need the description, then we'll have the number of people, which in this case will be zero, the default number, then the price per night, which would also be zero, and then the location. Uh, the location uh, won't be from a map, it will be an edit text just like the title and the description. We'll probably edit later on, but this is just to get the project started and so that we can post something. So I'll keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so uh, now we'll need to add a couple of handles. These handles will be for the submits and the edit the edit of some of the inputs that we have here for the title description number of people the price per night and the location uh, and we'll call this second one handle submit uh, handle um, submit not um, sorry handle input change the handle submit is the other one so handle input change and this will be the function that will receive um, the data anytime any input changes within the, um, the UI. Okay? And then we'll have the handle submit. Now, the handle submit is the function which we will be called when we click the submit button. Uh, this will make an HTTP request and uh, get uh, the response from it. Uh, this will be done using Axios, just as we did uh, for the login. Okay, so uh, now we need, need to bind these uh, functions uh, to our class. So in this case, we just do this dot handle input change equals to this dot handle input change dot bind this. Anytime you have uh, uh, functions of this type, you have to bind them to the class. And let's do the same thing for the handle submit. And we are done. I'm going to leave these functions right now open uh, for the future. I'm going to do the render and handle the, um, the UI elements. <coughs> so let's add, let's add render. <coughs> Sorry about that. Then return, as always. And in this return, I'm going to... What I like to do with Re React is because you have to have a main div uh, or a main tag holding everything together, I like to just add an empty tag. Uh, and this will hold all of the elements that go inside the UI. Okay? Now let's simply add a form. So form... Go a bit below, enlarge this a bit, okay? Form, and the first uh, thing that we are going to add is the label, uh, is the title, so label. 
title and now let's add an input so input not impu, input input <laughs> yeah let's give it a name we and this name will have to be uh, will have to match this uh, variable because this, this is the way that we are going to find the variable and update it this will become a lot more clear in the second when we actually do the handle input change for now just take my word for it um, and you'll see it working in a second so the type will be text nothing nothing fancy with this and the value will be equal to these dot state dot title collapse this to make more space yeah okay and then on change this will handle input change okay that's it <coughs> And we are not going to have anything inside the input so we can just close um, the tag like that okay um, one thing that i forgot to to do is in the form we say on submit then on submit we will obviously call the handle submit so equal to this dot handle submit that's it and now we can just simply copy and paste this uh, label around but before that let me just check if we are able to see it working in here so let's come in here and say posts slash create and something went wrong let me just restart the server 12 seconds later Oh, I forgot the export default. Maybe that's the problem. So at, at the end of the file, remember, uh, you have to do the default uh, create. Maybe this will fix it. Let's see. Uh, apart from that, it seems actually fine. So I'm not getting why it is giving such such an error. 20 minutes later. Oh, it is saying that component is not defined, obviously. <laughs> because we have to to place it in the import so i'm going to come in here and say components yeah that should be the problem and that should fix it yeah okay that's it <laughs> i'm sorry about that uh, now let's just jump into the post create and there's still an error let me check two thousand years later okay so here we go it is showing the title and one thing that i had to change was um, we can't call react like this it must be uh, singled out okay so now we have an input and i'm going to zoom in here in here uh, we have the label and then the input text okay and right now as you can see i'm typing and nothing is, cha is changing uh, for this we need to do the handle um, input change so let's jump in there and in here we are going to do something simple things which is to pass along the events <coughs> uh, the event will contain all of the information of the um, of the elements uh, at that moment uh, we'll get the targets to be events dot targets Okay, uh, moving on, we'll get the, um, the value of the, the element. Value equals to uh, target.value. And finally, we'll get the target name equals to targets.name. So the target name will be this name, uh, depending on what element it is getting it from, and the value will be this value. Okay, nothing new here. Uh, and then what we do is set the state for the variable with this name. So it is title, description, number of people, etc., etc., and we pass along the value. 
So let me just give it some space here. Say set state. And in here we have to do uh, between, uh, I don't know how these are called, uh, I, straight brackets, wherever, <laughs> something like that. You get my point, please look at the screen. Uh, and uh, place the variable in here. So this way we'll be able to actually call a variable uh, that has the name that's inside the variable name. Uh, if we didn't do this, if we just did like it did it like this, um, name value, then as you can see, it marks it as red. Uh, this means that it will try to change the name, uh, the variable that's called name and not the, the, the value that's inside our variable name. Okay, so that's why we have to place the brackets um, in either side. Okay, and now it, it should change. So let's uh, hope for that and come in here, reload the page, and as you can see, it is changing. Okay, uh, this means that it is being correctly updated, and then the value will be fetched from this state.title, which is this variable in here. I know this may seem confused, but it is how React handles it. This is in the documentation of React, so if you want to check it, I'll leave a link down below for that. Okay. Now, let's move on and simply copy and paste the hell out of them <laughs> and do the description, the number of people, etc, etc. So, for this, let's say description. The name will be description. The value will be description. Okay, and the handle input change will be the same. We don't have to ch to change it because it, is, it receives an attribute which will be uh, the um, the, ta the 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 element itself. Okay, then we want the number of people. We pass along the name which will be number of people uh, make sure you don't make any typos here because if uh, the 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 names diverge from the the variables uh, then uh, it won't work okay so in here the type will be number instead of text obviously and it will be number of people next we have the price per night which will be the same as the number of people. So number. And finally, we have the location. Location and this dot state log dot location. Okay, so that's all done and dusted. Uh, now, all you have to do is to create a button in order to submit the file. So, input type equals to submit value, which will be equal to submit. Submit with a capital S. Yeah. Close that and we are done. Now, the only thing that's left is the handle submit. But before we do that, let me just check in here. And as you can see, uh, all of the these are created. Um, there's one thing that is they are not very pretty because they are being created uh, like this. Uh, but if we uh, extend out, then it is you can understand what's in there. Uh, as I said, I'm not going to look at the UI uh, looking pretty at the moment. I'm going to look at that at the end of the, the, the series. Right now, I just want things to work. So this will be fine for the moment. And I hope you understood how to create a form in React. Uh, now, all that's left is to handle the submits. And for this, we'll import Axios. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, from Axios. And in the handle submit, you simply say axios dot 
posts. And in here, we still don't have um, an endpoint which we can uh, send this to. Uh, we'll do that in the next lesson. So for, for the time being, I'm going to leave this empty and add it uh, in the next lesson when we define what the, the endpoint will be. For now, let's uh, just say uh, null. And then we have to pass along all of the parameters that we have in here. So the title, the description, the number of people, the price per night, the location, and uh, the Firebase current user so that we can verify uh, which user is currently logged in. Okay, so that's pretty simple to do. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is to say user and uh, in here, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say user at all, I'm going to say params and then open brackets again and in here I'm going to say user. User, two points, and now we need the Firebase. So I'm going to quickly import Firebase. Okay. Come in here and say Firebase dot auth dot current user. And this will uh, get us all of the information of the current user. And in our backend, we can check if the, um, the credentials of the user are correct. Not the credentials, but if the, the token of the user is uh, live and well, and we, and we can check that with Firebase. None of these will be done in the front end uh, for obvious reasons. So title, we this dot state dot title. And now we have to do uh, repeat this for each and every single uh, variable. So I'm going to simply uh, go, try to go as fast as possible through this. Price per night, price per night, price per night, location. And yeah, we are done. So then after the Axios call is made, we'll have a then res Open this console log res. Uh, the the then is uh, when uh, everything goes well, and then we'll have the catch, obviously, which is if some error is thrown during the the process. So error. Open curly brackets and then console log error. And that's it. Obviously, this won't work because it is making a call to nothing uh, and it will probably throw an error. But now you know how to create a form in React, which is really useful because we will have to, to create a couple more of them throughout this series. Uh, but for the time being, I'm going to leave this uh, part of the lesson as is. Uh, in the next part, we'll actually create these endpoints and we'll do all of that in the back end. We'll create a post model and we, we, we will make the user be able to create a, uh, a post. Um, then in the lesson after that, I'll probably just show you how to list all of the, the posts. Uh, that will be pretty straightforward, but it will be more um, interesting to see how the back end handles lists. Uh, there isn't um, a recycler view like in uh, Android for those of you that came from Android, uh, but yeah, it will be pretty interesting. So um, yeah, I'm going to push this video now. Um, all of the code will be in my GitHub as always. And yeah, I hope to see you again tomorrow and ciao.